Good evening, Earthmaster here, jumping on the live stream, August 3rd, 2021, about 8.08 p.m. West Coast time, where we have another earthquake coming in to the uh, live seismographs graphs in Japan. Kind of watching quite a bit of activity kick up here off the east coast of Japan today, a uh, major uptick. So far, the latest information on this uh, sizable signature on the uh, quake, on the uh, seismograph, appears to be a 5.2, uh, at least according to the EMSC maps. So far, the USGS has not issued a uh, notification on this earthquake that's shown on the uh, seismograph. EMSC does have it right there, 5.2 off the coast of Japan. So kind of waiting. Uh, if that is the case, then that would make this uh, 5.2, the second largest quake in this cluster of uh, earthquake activity off the east coast here into the uh, subduction zone of the Japan Trench. The largest so far has been a 5.8. So things have been, well, they were progressing before the 5.8 and they're progressing uh, larger after the 5.8 now. This tells me that something uh, big is about to happen in this region. Uh, I keep repeating myself and I'm going to say it again. If you've been watching my videos, I've been talking about this area right here to about right up here into this bend, this little bend here in the Pacific Plate. This area has been awfully, awfully quiet with uh, earthquake activity over the past couple months, few months, relative to the rest of the plate motion all around it. Um, you know, it's you got a lot of shifting and shuffling of the Pacific Plate up to the north, uh, down to the south. Also, a lot of plate movement over here to the west in the China, uh, Taiwan, of course, Indonesia. Uh, we had some major earthquakes uh, a couple months ago in the Kermadec Trench area. And uh, meanwhile, for the most part, relatively, this area has been quiet. Yes, we have had quakes, but we have not seen sufficient release and adjustment in this area of the plate. I think we're seeing that today. Um, so far, like I say, it's still, they're still not, they're still not USGS, man. I tell you what, they are slow. They are very slow. <clears throat> 5.2. Once again, this occurred about 13 minutes ago. So it takes them a while showing up right now on the globe or at least on the map scale there. 5.2. Uh, and these guys have it set at about 20 kilometers below the surface. right just right well you guys can't see that map i'm showing that's kind of odd why it does that Let's see if this interactive map will do it there we go so the epicenter is in that area where the uh blinking red circle is i guess right there seen kind of a swarm in just one general area but it looks like it may be spreading out here at least according to the emsc map uh, up here to the north and a little bit to the southeast. Uh, and you can see the trench a little bit. Actually well defined, the subduction zone. Um, major player when it comes to some significant mega quakes. Uh, Japan builds up quite a bit of stress accumulation um, yearly compared to other areas such as like uh, the subduction zone off the coast of Oregon, the Cascadia. So that's why I'm kind of kind of been looking at this area for quite some time uh, it's just you, you can't have all this quiet activity uh, and expect it to forever be quiet most of the time it will break out with a, uh, a swarm of activity and possibly a significant large magnitude so we just uh, kind of watching it I'm waiting to see what the uh, USGS is gonna issue on this uh, earthquake so for now let's go ahead and check out we'll come back to this Go ahead and check out what's going on over here on this side of the plate, which has been somewhat active as well. Still seeing a pretty good swarm of activity near Alder Springs in the coast range. Uh, looks like it, I wouldn't doubt it if it starts to bounce back up now as far as the, uh, the multitude of quakes. Seems like a little teeter-totter event between the west coast and uh, the east coast of Japan. So looking at this swarm of activity here, we're looking at uh, oh, about 12 earthquakes or so. This is over the last 24. Of course, there was quite a bit more yesterday. 
This is the all magnitudes, and within the last 24 hours, it had a couple threes, it looks like. The largest, a 3.1. And they're staying, uh, they're, they're kind of staying within the same epicenter area. A little bit of movement south of Willits, or uh, north of Willits as well. A little microquake near Brooks, uh, Brook Trails. Cascadia, relatively quiet, uh, nothing going on as far as any surface quaking goes. Uh, movement up here into the Pacific Northwest, Washington region. Uh, some movement near Mount St. Helens and Mount Rainier. We'll check out some of that activity here in just a little bit on the PNSN network. Uh, I want to go over here to the Yellowstone area, Intermountain West, around the mountains here. Uh, Sawtooth or a bitter tooth. Fault range. Some movement along the Sawtooth Fault over here, but not a whole lot of movement. It's just kind of a couple microquakes. Yellowstone, let's go ahead and check them out real quick while I'm on it. Um, not a whole lot of movement. This is some type of interference here at Mirror Lake in uh, Pelicone Co Cone. Some interference there, not for sure what it is. Some type of adjustment. If this was earthquake activity. Man, it would show up significantly on these uh, other stations, but it's not. I don't see any significant swarming. Um, just a couple small microquakes over here around the Maple Creek readings or uh, Maple Creek area. These are the readings here on the graph, these little seismograph spikes indicating very small microquakes locally within that region of Yellowstone National Park. Okay, there is a 4.9. Wow. Looks like they uh, <clears throat> looks like they downgraded it. So EMSC has this at a 5.2. I'm looking at the timestamp there, 0256, because that's about what time it showed up on the live seismographs. Um, so a little downgrade from the USGS, no surprise, right? But still, that's a pretty sizable quake, so that's not technically not the second largest quake now, unless for some reason they upgrade it, which they possibly could do. Upgrade, downgrade, all sorts of games playing. Uh, by the USGS folks. Right now, EMSC still sticking with the 5.2. Uh, let's see if this has been reviewed. Source parameters have not yet been reviewed. And far as the USGS, let's see if we got a professional reviewing it. Yes, <clears throat> it has been reviewed. So, still heightened earthquake activity uh, taking place off the coast of Japan, folks. Definitely need to be on guard. It's a cluster. Check out that cluster. 14 moderate to large earthquakes. The largest one of 5.8. You know, you can't tell me something's not brewing up here. We're kind of getting a, a migration in this fashion here. And let's see here. Kind of looking at the times that these uh, earthquakes struck, and they're kind of randomly bouncing back and forth. So, definitely quite a bit of build up here, folks. Uh, that's the last thing we need is a major quake off the coast uh, during the Olympics over there around Tokyo. Yikes! So, I will be watching this uh, all night. Let's go ahead and move on for now. Um, down south, the uh, Mariana Trench region, pretty quiet. Papua New Guinea getting in on 5.5 earthquake, just northeast of there at uh, looks like 10 kilometers. And some further deep movement, large deep movement, 5.4 and 4.6. Uh, way down there, 567 kilometers for one of them. <clears throat> wow. And uh, of course, we kind of monitoring this activity over here too, right? We've seen a, a pretty good cluster of swarms there today and yesterday. Large and moderate uh, earthquakes. Go ahead and check out last seven days. Uh, yeah, this kind of shows the uh, yesterday's. Well, not really. It doesn't really show too much activity. Maybe one. Um, but still, even in this area, kind of working its way up on the magnitude scale. Um, in in that region, but man, there's a there's a definitely a lot of stress over here on this section of the plate. Let's move to the west here. Uh, Greece getting in on some action over here. Looks like a little swarm of activity near the Sea of Crete. And swarms all over the place. These are not little bitty swarms either. There's quite a bit of movement. Um, some movement over here north of Kuwait City. 4.5 out in Iran. Atlantic Ocean, Mid-Atlantic Ridge looking pretty quiet. Iceland 
Greenland, uh, looking pretty quiet up here to the north. Uh, Puerto Rico area, let's see what's going on in this neck of the woods. Pretty quiet, man. That's very minimal earthquake activity for the Puerto Rico area. Only about four earthquakes um, over the last 24 hours and nothing significant. South America, some movement along the subduction zone down here, the Peru-Chile Trench, north of Santiago, Chile. Yeah, some of these, uh, some of these kind of deep here within the trench area. <clears throat> uh, let's see, what do we got here for the East Coast? A little bit of movement along the Appalachians, or at least, uh, what do we got? Yeah, kind of there in Tennessee. A little 2.1, 4.5 kilometers for that. I don't see any other earthquakes being reported here on the map. A little bit of movement out in Texas as well. A little cluster of quakes near Snyder, Texas. And down here along the uh, Pecos, Texas region, northwest of Pecos, uh, some microquakes kicking off over the last 24. California, <clears throat> what do we got going on down here? Just your typical day down in the concrete jungle areas of LA. Not a whole lot of movement. Uh, definitely some movement along the San Jacinto Fault area, but nothing above uh, background levels. Looks pretty uh, average for a, for a uh, Southern California day in the earthquake department. No salt, no... Uh, Earthquake activity around the Salton Sea, just a little bitty one. And uh, Ridgecrest, a little bit of movement along the fracture zone there, the July 4th, uh, July, July 5th sequence of earthquakes. Long Valley Super Volcano, still some movement just outside the caldera. Uh, Mammoth Lake sits up here, Long Valley Super Volcano. It's kind of cool. I visited that area uh, earlier this year. There's not a whole lot out there, man. Not a whole lot. A whole lot of dirt roads and, uh, and and a whole lot of people camping out there. Kind of odd. <clears throat> but, um, yeah, not a whole lot of movement down there around the Long Valley. Just outside the caldera, though, folks. Just some microquakes. And uh, around the Antelope Valley area, uh, still seeing some movement there as well. Uh, let's see here. Bay Area is pretty quiet. So the mountain, or at least the activity up here in Seattle, let's go ahead and check out the Tremor map along the uh, Cascadia. Relatively quiet south, which is kind of odd. We've been seeing most of the activity down here uh, along the southern end of the Cascadia rec in recent times. Uh, 201 epicenters confined to a small little area up here at the northern end of the Cascadia, Vancouver Island ranges. Uh, getting in on all of that action today. As far as the uh, volcanic seismicity around Mount Rainier, a little bit of movement showing up on the map. Let's see what these graphs look like today. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, you can see see a couple small earthquakes uh, situated very close. It looks like to, to the uh, seismograph station. And uh, some of this is distant earthquakes or interference. But uh, yeah, most of these localized, very spiky earthquakes are uh, localized um, in that area. Let's see what else we got. Uh, I was going to check out Mount Saint Mount Saint Helens. Excuse me, got a hiccup there. Let's see what's going on here. I just like to check some of these other seismographs around the area. That could be potentially picking up some movement. Um, at a distance as possible it could be that 4.9 uh, in Japan possibly I don't I'm not 100% certain I gotta see how amplified these are this one's pretty squashed though um, so this here looks like a very uh, localized quake but not big pretty really really small but yesterday's yesterday's activity man I can't really tell because it's uh, pretty well Pretty well toned down, if you know what I mean. <clears throat> so, just be on guard, folks. I have some. I have, I have a strange feeling something's kind of brewing out here between the West Coast, the East Coast. Uh, of course, the Alaska 8.2 area. Only seen a handful of aftershocks. It's very odd to see just just this many from an 8.2 that just struck, um, you know, a couple days ago. Kind of odd. So just keep 
keep your eyes on this region. I keep saying this right around here up to about here. Hopefully this arrow's accurate. I'm trying to point right over just south of Tokyo at this uh, plate boundary right here. It's plate interaction. Subduction zone up here. Uh, that's a major player, man, and, and some major quakes. Of course, that's where the uh, nine-pointer struck in 2001 or 2011. Get my numbers all mixed up here. So just be on guard, folks. I'm going to jump off here. Um, not a whole lot going on in the solar weather department. There was a little bit of interaction uh, last night, kind of tilted a tad bit. The uh, southward tilt was enough to increase geomagnetic activity to the minor G1 storm threshold. Uh, the disturbance is not expected to continue, and a return to quieter levels is predicted for the next 24 hours. But this just right here kind of shows you that, you know, you can't really forecast and predict everything. It just it doesn't happen. You can have all the tools and assume stuff, but uh, sometimes we get uh, some surprise events from the solar weather department. Uh, flare is pretty minimal. Not a whole lot of movement around the sun right now. A couple of coronal holes going to be facing Earth. <clears throat> Sunspots very minimal. All right, guys. Have a good night. Stay safe out there. Keep your eyes on Japan and the West Coast. We'll chat you guys a little bit later.